Hey there everyone, it's Belinda Weaver here and today I'm answering a bit of a sticky question. What if I suck? What if I suck? What if you suck? We all ask ourselves this question when we contemplate future action. Should I start posting on social? Mm, what if I suck? Should I start writing a blog? Ugh, what if I suck? With those two especially, what if I suck and then everyone will know? Mm. Should I put myself forward for a speaking gig? Ugh. Should I just send this copy to the client? What if it turns out I actually suck? So when you start stepping outside of your comfort zone, doing things you've not done before, maybe adding layers to things you have done before, doing them in new ways, it's hella scary, right? Every part of your being steps up to keep you safe. Thanks, amygdala. Yeah, so, you know, it tells you lots of mean things. You might get a full body reaction. It's basically red alert, don't do that at all. Sometimes we get things, ideas for things that we should do instead. Social posts. You know what? I'm going to spend just a little bit longer on the Canva templates just to make sure it's perfect. I'm going to create a lead magnet instead of a blog because I need a lead magnet if people are going to sign up to the list. So I'll just do the lead magnet instead, which also draws me back to Canva. Um, maybe I'll just spend so long on the speaking gig that, oh no, the time's expired and I don't have to make a decision. You know, what if I don't systemize? Because systemizing means that I have to get better and I have to be more efficient and I have to do more. <laughs> well, yes, I know that's a good idea, but I'll I'll just stay in this chaos a little bit longer. These are not things that we might be consciously aware of doing, but they absolutely happen. Not taking action or taking procrastination action keeps us safe from failure because failure hurts, man. We talk to our kids. If you've got kids, I'm always saying, you're not going to nail it the first time. You got to practice. You got to evolve. You got to get better. When you practice, it gets easier and you get better. Don't expect to land it the first time. Except for me, I expect myself to nail it the first time. And if I'm not going to nail it, it's not worth doing. No, no, no. That's something I've actively worked on a lot. Because I know that every time I've done something scary, something good's happened. Now, something good might be that nothing bad happened. The world didn't stop turning. I didn't explode. No one died. Right? But sometimes I actually get the outcome I wanted. Lots of good, really good things have happened. I felt the fear and I did the, it anyway and I got rewarded. In either situation, I've actually learned a lot about myself. Sometimes when I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone, I'm asking a lot more of myself in that moment. And I learned that I'm a lot more capable than I think I am, which is awesome. Sometimes I learn what doesn't work and that's hard. When something doesn't work, it requires a full reframe of what I gained, not what I lost. And that's, you know, I'm reading this book right now. Really good. The gap and the gain is what it's all about. Measuring what you have achieved, not measuring how you fell short. And, you know, there's this whole cliche we have all the time. Failure is critical. It's the lessons we learn from failure that make us better. La, la, la. Right. Yes, I understand. But it's really difficult to do those reframes. That as well takes practice. Worth it though. Um, and so what you actually have to be prepared to do is put yourself on the line. Once you're prepared for something to not work out, for you to not nail the landing every single time, you open yourself up to really amazing things. So here's the thing. When you're feeling fearful and you're hovering over the publish button, feeling like you're going to puke, remember, each time you do something that scares you, it won't be as scary next time. In fact, it will be easier as you build your muscles and your tolerance to do difficult things. It will absolutely get easier. Think back to things that you did in your first year of business as a copywriter. Terrifying, but now you're doing them every day. The other thing I want you to think of is that fortune really does favor the bold. So 
those copywriters that you're looking at who are achieving their goals and getting the gigs, you know, doing all the things that you want to do too, they're putting their hand up. They are saying yes. They are hitting publish. And rest assured, they are absolutely scared as well. But they're doing it anyway. So I want you to build your muscles to do hard things. Surround yourself with people who will cheer you on and support you so you are not alone on this journey, but also trust that the outcome will give you something, that it will be worth it. What happens next after that moment, after you move past that precipice where you could go forward or backwards, after that moment, that's what matters more than how you feel in that moment. So I'm about to send out an email about just this very thing related to my really scary drive into a campsite. I would love to know what you think about this. How often do you push yourself out of your comfort zone? How often do you say yes to scary things? How do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments.